Terrific, terrific Tuesday of the week bring down. It's time for the terrific Tuesday tip of the week. Yeah. yeah. Today. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, my dear. Today, KTV will show you how life is meant to be. Today, KTV will show you how life is meant to be. Not exactly, but KTV is going to break down web copy that sells into five easy questions for you. So I had a little help today from Halliana on Terrific Tuesday Tip of the Week because I've been a little under the weather and so I needed some help, some pick me up. So thank you very much, Halliana. Today's KTV is coming to you from corporate housing, not from the new office because there really hasn't been much progress made on the new office. So it's a little loud in here. One of the advantages or disadvantages of inviting you all into my life each week rather than batching these out is you get me as I am this week a little bit under the weather a little bit less energy a little bit less beautiful and you also get uh, all the noise from corporate housing so please forgive but don't let that fool you today's KTV is still going to be packed full of content that will help you do more of what you love make more money, and reach more people through authentic selling. So let's jump in. As I mentioned, I was a little bit under the weather today, and so I got to do one of my favorite things, which is read books about sales. When I'm sick, I love to do this. And this is one of my favorites, Web Copy That Sells by Maria Veloso. Maria Veloso, and I'm probably mispronouncing her name with my southern accent. One of the reasons I love this book is it breaks down creating an offer, and it breaks down web copy that sells into five easy questions that I want to share with you today. The next time you are creating an offer or getting ready to put together your thoughts around your web copy for a specific offer, refer back to these questions. They are awesome. The first question is, what's the problem? We have talked about this on KTV before. I, I once heard, I, I refer to this usually as pain points. What's the pain point? But more simply put, what's the problem? If, if someone's going to give you their hard-earned money and their time, two things on which most people are short on, right? You need to be able to fix a problem or a pain point for them. So what's the problem? The second question is, why hasn't the problem been solved? So, so those are two really easy questions, right? Let me give you an example of what this might sound like. So the problem could be, I'm not making enough sales. I'm not getting enough money. I'm not closing enough clients in my business. The reason that you are having that problem is because sales feels icky to you. Sales feels pushy. You're worried about everybody not liking you or coming across as that bulldozer type salesperson. That's the reason that the problem hasn't been solved. So question number one, what's the problem? Question number two, why hasn't the problem been solved? Question number three is what is possible? This is where you set the stage for you solving the issue, your product or your service. So it, it might sound something like this. Believe it or not, it is entirely possible to do what you love every day, make a ton of money doing it, and reach people through authentic selling, without feeling pushy, without feeling icky. What is possible? Question number one, what's the problem? Question number two, why hasn't it been solved? Question number three, what is possible? The next question, question number four, is something that I have hammered home with every one of my clients. I have talked about on KTV before, and there's a different spin on this, but it's basically the same thing. It's how is it different? What will change as a result of your product or your service? In other words, question number four is what is different now? This is what I refer to all the time as your benefits or why the heck it matters. So let's play this out in our example. Our problem was I'm not making enough money. I'm not closing enough sales. Why that is not been solved, is sales feels icky, it feels pushy, and I don't want to push people away or be the railroad sales type person. What is possible? It's entirely possible to make money, to do what you love, and to reach people through authentic selling without being icky or pushy. What's going to change as a result of that? As a result of that, you're going to get to run your business, live your dream. It really is possible, all through the lens of selling. This is what's called your unique selling position. It's what makes you different and 
how your customer's life is going to change as a result of working with you. And question number five is quite simply a call to action, or as Maria puts it, what you should do now. Always leave the buyer with a call to action. So again, these five questions are what's the problem? Why hasn't the problem been solved? What is possible? What's different now? And what should you do now? This is just a different way of looking at some of the authentic selling strategy that I have presented to you before. Pain points, features, benefits, and why the heck it matters. But I think these questions are super simple, super easy to apply, and I guarantee if you apply them to every offer you create, every bit of web copy that you write, you will connect with more people. And why does that matter? How will things be different as a result of that? You'll get to do more of what you love, reach more people, and make a lot more money doing it. And who doesn't want more of that? Thanks so much for bearing with my lack of energy and these corporate housing surroundings. And tune in next week for the continued evolution of the house and the terrific Tuesday tip of the week. Yeah. To make a web, put one page and make five copies out of it. Once you've done that, then, then tell the sales coach how have you done it. Exactly.